So, unfortunately for us as Carolina Panther fans, we had to see our team fall to the Dallas Cowboys on Sunday, 36-28. Yeah, so this one was actually a pretty good game. It just kind of slipped away at one point, and uh, the Panthers tried to claw back. They just weren't able to get all the way back. So, uh, as usual, I will give you the stat breakdown. So, Dak goes for 14 for 22, throws for 188 yards, four touchdowns, and uh, no interceptions. He also rushed for 35 yards. Pretty impressive game for him. Uh, Zeke, however, I would say is the the big star here, as he comes out and rushes for 143 yards and a touchdown. Uh, He did, like, miss the only target he had as a receiver, but I don't really think that matters. He rushed for almost 150 yards and got himself a touchdown. Amari Cooper, Dalton Schultz, Cedric Wilson, and Blake Jarwin all brought in the, the four Dak passing touchdowns, so he was just feeding the feeding the whole family. Uh, Cooper led in receiving yards with 69 yards. Dak recovered a uh, Tyler Beatus fumble, and Trayvon Diggs gets two picks off of Sam Darnold, him uh, continuing his, his hot streak. For the Panthers, they didn't play a bad game. They just kind of fell apart in the third quarter, which we'll definitely get into, but uh, Sam Darnold it was 26 for 39, 301 yards, two touchdowns, and two interceptions. And he also rushed for 35 yards and two touchdowns. Currently leads the league in rushing touchdowns with five, which is not something I thought I'd be saying this year. Cuba uh, Hubbard with CMC out, led in rushing yards. He did pretty good. DJ Moore uh, brought in 113 receiving yards and two touchdowns and had uh, one of his catches in this game was just unbelievable. He did like some kind of Spider-Man landing without like dropping all the way and got up and kept going. So it was it was pretty good. But yeah, the story of this game is not really that it was a, a like bad game for the Panthers. I mean, if they lose by eight, which isn't really that bad. Uh, it just came down to the third quarter. They came out of halftime with a one-point lead, and the Cowboys piled on 20 in the third unanswered. And the Panthers put up 14 in the fourth and uh, just kind of lost it on that last drive. And the Cowboys sealed the game with a field goal. So it was definitely a competitive game, definitely a good game. Uh, we knew with a 3-0 team coming and facing a 2-1 team, especially with which two teams these were specifically, this kind of fiery Cowboys offense with this very good Panthers defense. We knew this would be a good game. Now, the Panthers defense this week did not look like they did the previous weeks. Um, so that's that was a little unfortunate, but they didn't look terrible either. They just didn't come up with any of like the super big plays that they had been coming out with. So I don't think... The Panthers will will be allowing twenty unanswered in a quarter again. Hopefully, I think they're they're better than that. Um, yeah, and we also have something that we'll we'll talk about with the Panthers towards the end of the segment. That I think once once they appear, that we definitely should not be allowing that to happen. But uh, yeah, what are your thoughts on this one? So, if you listen to a lot of the uh, sports shows, you would have thought that we got absolutely destroyed in this game for whatever reason. Um, obviously. We allowed 20 points in one quarter, which you just cannot do on defense. But we were leading at halftime. Um, It was very close at halftime. I didn't really think either team had the advantage at that point. I mean, it was back and forth. There were some some plays that were like, eh. Specifically, that second fumble with Dalton Schultz. I don't understand the whole forward progress thing with that because he, he caught the ball. He's running. And then immediately as he gets hit, the ball pops out. Initially, we we couldn't tell that the ball got popped out when he first got hit. Uh, We thought it was later on. But they kept showing replays. And as soon as he got hit, the ball came out. But they're like, nope, that's that's forward progress ruled. And you cannot go back and review or challenge forward progress. So once they rule that, that's pretty much done. So I would definitely say... um, Panther got hosed in that situation. I mean, that that was just straight-up nonsense. Now, besides that, the Panthers were horrible in the third quarter. Um, and overall, the run defense was just not what it needed to be. I mean, Zeke looked like old Zeke. He didn't, you know, he didn't have like a 90-yard rush or anything, but he was just consistently going at us play after play after play, almost 150 yards rushing. You know, we came in with a top run defense. And it definitely, I don't want to say exposed because that's that's just too much of an over-exaggeration for me. But it definitely got a little bit of cracks in it. Um, you know, when you're going up against a good offensive line and a good running back, 
then this can happen. You know, our defense isn't impenetrable. You know, this is something that can happen when you're going up against good players. Uh, so I think that was really the biggest thing for us. Uh, you know, we, we allowed four touchdowns passing, but it's not as if Dak really threw much. Uh, he did throw 14 times for 200 yards, but it's not like he was throwing it 50 times for 500 yards or something. Uh, so really, it's just the turnovers that we had. Um, Sam Darnold, two picks. Trayvon Diggs just made two great plays. I mean, that second one, he just stole it from DJ Moore, who was having a great game. And I think he'll continue to have great games, but having that ball stolen by Trayvon Diggs on that second pick really kind of hurt us there. Um, so you have to eliminate the turnovers. Um, the fact that our defense really couldn't stop Jack on the ground. Uh, the fact that Dak threw 200 yards and he barely threw the ball. You know, just all of those things uh, overall pretty much killed us in this game. Now, like I said, we, we didn't get destroyed. It's, it's not as if they won 40 to nothing here. You know, like I said, it was tied going in. It was very close going in the half. We were leading. Um, and then third quarter, that's when they came out and destroyed us. Fourth quarter, you know, we were coming back and it was looking like, hey, maybe the Cowboys are starting to fall asleep a little bit now that they got the big lead. And then, you know, that last drive, we just couldn't stop nothing. <laughs> so, you know, you have to give credit to the Cowboys. I mean, they've looked pretty good this season. They did beat the Chargers. Um, to me, they probably shouldn't have won that game, but a win is a win. And the first game of the season, they probably should have beat the Bucks. We said that um, when we came on right after that game. And then last week, obviously, they just obliterated the Eagles. It never really looked like a game after that first, you know, back and forth touchdown. Um, so I have to give credit to the Cowboys there. Um, for us, though, I think we'll be fine. We did play some inferior competition to start off. We obviously played the Jets. Uh, the Texans are not good. The Saints, you know, we were like, okay, after that first game against the Saints uh, for, for the Packers, they got destroyed. I'm like, okay, the Saints are probably going to be pretty good. And they don't look too good against us in that second game. So, um, and then the Saints haven't looked good since. So I'm not really sure how to really measure that Saints victory either. But I don't want to say this team is fraudulent by any means because they're three and one. It's the NFL. It's not like they're playing college teams or something, you know. So either way, I don't think it's the end of the world. And we do have Stefan Gilmore coming in from the Patriots. Initially, it looked like he was going to get released. They announced it. And about one o'clock or so, I think it was one or two o'clock, uh, we came in, got the trade done, and he's going to be coming home to the Carolinas. Uh, I think, you know, hopefully JC Horn is going to be able to come back at some point. But now that we have a lot of pieces in our secondary, we just got CJ Henderson uh, last week uh, from Jacksonville. I think our secondary is finally starting to look really good. Got Jeremy Chin at the safety position. Uh, you see our linebacker core. Defensive line, they're all good. So it's not going to be the end for the Panthers here. Yeah, to go for the immediate future, I think both these teams, and we'll of course talk about this at the end of the show, but both these teams should improve to 3-1 or uh, 4-1 next week uh, as as they come up with some some matchups that they should definitely be taking. But yeah, that stuff on Gilmore pickup has just, has just been the, the highlight of my day today. I know he's hurt right now and hasn't played in a while, but let's not act like he's a, he was a bum. Uh, when he's healthy, he's going to be great. His contract was a little a little tough to pull in, but I think we'll, we'll be fine. Uh, they're clearly prioritizing just making a, a monster secondary, and they are, they are succeeding at that. So this is this has just been, been great news. I, I can't wait to see him play uh, in, in Panthers colors, and I, I'm sure this will be a, a great decision. Uh, we got him for a sixth-round pick as well, probably because they were just trying to... They were trying to trade him. They couldn't find one. They're going to release him, but the release wouldn't process until like four o'clock or something like that. So I guess they found an option. Uh, I'm not sure what other people offer them for the Patriots to decide to give them to the three one Panthers um, that they play in a month uh, and who also only offer like a sixth round pick. So I don't know what they turned down, but uh, I'm glad we apparently had the best offer or whatever made that decision. I will not be mad about having Stefan Gilmore join the Panthers. He's going to just make this defense even even better. So this is this, this is a great uh, development for me today. 
But yeah, I think both these teams moving forward are going to be doing fine this team, or fine this year, my bad. I honestly think, um, just kind of looking at their schedules, that uh, the Cowboys obviously playing the division they play are going to have a little bit easier schedule naturally. Uh, and both these teams could end up kind of doing about the same, I think. I think the hardest part for the Panthers is that they have to face uh, the Buccaneers twice, whereas uh, the Cowboys have to face Daniel Jones twice and Jalen Hurts twice and uh, Taylor Heineke, which that's probably going to be their biggest challenge divisionally, as we talked about a lot. But we saw what he did or what they did to Jalen Hurts. That wasn't that wasn't a problem. So the Cowboys will probably be doing great. Uh, I have to give credit to them. They played a great game. They played an exceptional third quarter. And uh, they kept the kept the pressure at the end to make sure the Panthers didn't complete that comeback. So this is a fun game. This I think would honestly be a fun playoff matchup if it, if it was to somehow happen. Um, yeah, these are two good teams, and I think that you know they've got decent futures ahead of each other for this season. Uh, and I don't think that this is a panic game for the Panthers. They they're three one. You can't be bad about three one, regardless of who those three are. We've said it multiple times. Um, any team in the NFL can beat any team on any given Sunday or Thursday or Monday. These are NFL teams. These are all NFL caliber players. So you have to remember that. I mean, we can say all we want. Oh, well, it's like the Jets. It's so-and-so. It's so-and-so. I, I think people would arguably say that the Titans have been better than us and the Jets just beat the Titans. Of course, there were some of the receivers. We'll, we'll get to that later. But any team can beat any team. And uh, we... We handle what we had to do. You can't. You play who's in front of you. We're three one. The Cowboys are three one, and I think neither team should really be too upset about what how they are right now.